mention about our childhood, my cousins would always claim that our grandparents loved me more than they loved them, that I was their favorite grandchild. In the name of fairness, I would always tell them that it's not true, that grandpa and grandma loved all of us equally. One of my cousins, relentless in her efforts to convince me otherwise, would always tell me, Risa, you don't understand because you're not Abakasi. In the Samoan language, we use the term Abakasi to mean half Samoan and half anything else, our way of calling somebody mixed or biracial. Broken down, Abakasi is a hybrid term, Afa meaning half and Kasi meaning one, literally translating into half of one. Every cousin on my mother's side of the family is half of something, half Samoan, half Mexican half Samoan, half black. More half Samoan and more half black because that's the apakasi that most of my cousins are made up of. And then there's me. I'm not apakasi and my cousins never let me forget it. We use the term uli uli to mean black. Black as an adjective as in the black cat, black hair, black jacket, uli uli. We use the term mea uli to mean black person. Mea uli is also a hybrid term. Mea means thing. Uli still means black. What we are saying is that black people aren't even people when translated in my language. They are just male Uli. What we're saying is that my cousins were always right, that being a Pakasi comes with a price, but that being male Uli doesn't even come with a pulse, black thing. Being a Pakasi meant watching my family water down our culture so that my cousins didn't have to bear the responsibility of learning it so that my cousins can grow up only putting in 50% of the effort in becoming it. Being met Uli meant that grandpa really did slam the door on my aunt's face when my uncle brought home a black woman, when my other uncle brought home another black woman, when my third uncle brought home yet another black woman. Being a Fakasi meant knowing that just because you can't understand when people speak Samoan around you, you know that they're talking about you because of how many times they say met Uli when you're standing in the room with them. Being met Uli meant that my cousin had every right to be paranoid of how much love she lost out on for having the darkest skin in our family. See, the difference between being black and brown can be as subtle or as stark as your family wants it to be. That sometimes your first experiences with racism involve watching your cousins wonder if your grandparents can, more, they can love more than half of them at the same time, that sometimes your family is their first ethnic studies lecture before you ever walk into a classroom, how they teach you that just because I'm a person of color, just because I'm brown doesn't mean that I can't be anti-black, no matter if my cousins are black. No matter if my partner is black, my solidarity is not golden just because I'm not white. There's a hierarchy to this shit that it's not always people of color versus white people. Most times, it's black people versus the rest of us. It's a Pagasi versus full-blooded. It's your family versus your family. It is you versus the mirror. A lesson in not pretending like the village didn't leave some children behind to spend the rest of their lives questioning if the village even wants them. Sometimes the village doesn't want every child and sometimes you gotta stop believing that it does. There is no translation for anti-blackness in Samoan. There's no translation for anti-blackness in a lot of our languages, but it doesn't mean that we haven't been nurturing it when we speak, when we live, when we immigrate, when we dream American, when we have children and only love the parts of them that our language has translations for, that whiteness has approved, I am learning that just because it is cultural does not mean that it is sacred. That sometimes the village needs to apologize. Our customs and traditions need to change and that oftentimes you have to believe the child when they show you where it hurts when they leave you searching for the right words to name their pain, when the name for their pain can't be translated in our language, but in our silence, when their pain is the very reason for why we have no other choice but to speak. Woo!